Two of my social studies classes in the history club, my fourth year, I have several major goals that I strive to accomplish each year. First, I want the students to understand why all veterans should be honored. I want the students to understand that all veterans made sacrifices for each and every one of them by serving their country. Next, I want the students to understand why we celebrate Memorial Day and Veterans Day each year. And furthermore, that all veterans should be honored every day. Next, I want the students to know about our American history, meaning all the major wars that this country has fought in to win, defend, and preserve our democracy and way of life. I also want them to know how lucky they are to live in the United States of America. I also want the students to understand the meaning of the phrases, freedom isn't free, and he or she paid the ultimate sacrifice. Next, I hope that when the students graduate from Tejanto, they'll have a better appreciation and admiration of veterans and will take it upon themselves to continue to honor and thank veterans in their own special way. Lastly, I will continue to host annual Veterans Day assemblies, Veterans Expos, Expos and dinners. Having a father and three brothers as veterans, I know that all veterans should be honored, thanked and remembered. And that's why I will continue to host these events. I also want to invite veterans to come in and speak to my classes so that the students can learn and experience firsthand what their sacrifices were and why it is important to honor those who have done so much for our nation. The first person I'd like to introduce um, was the president of the History Club this year. She's been a, you know, a three-year member and has been on all my trips I've taken so far to Washington, D.C., San Antonio, Texas and Pearl Harbor, Hawaii this year. We're headed to New Orleans next year to visit the National D-Day Museum. Uh, she's a little, little under the weather today. If you see, she turned around, she's glowing from the back. She got some serious sunburn today, maybe some sun poison. But she still made it here. And the video you're going to see in about 15 minutes, she put together. You know, I guarantee you'll be impressed when you see it. I told her what I wanted to do, and she put it together. So please welcome Caitlin Giacomano. It is important to understand why America is so great. Our freedom was not just given to us, but was earned by the brave individuals here today and others who have passed on. I have a tremendous amount of respect for veterans, and that respect has grown through the History Club. It's easy to learn about history through textbooks, but it's much more meaningful to learn through experience. Recently, the History Club went to Hawaii and visited Pearl Harbor. The somber, melancholy feeling of actually visiting the site was an experience that textbooks could not explain. Seeing the Arizona Memorial was a very touching experience. Witnessing the oil that still flows to the top of the ocean shows how recent the tragedy of Pearl Harbor was, and actually seeing Pearl Harbor allowed you to see how big of a tragedy it was. Oftentimes, freedom is taken for granted. Some kids may overlook the sacrifices that have been made. By talking with veterans through various history club events, students have a better understanding of what it is that many of you have been through, something that is hard for this generation since we have, until recently, seen very little war in our lives. Personally, I cannot express my gratitude to those who have served. Each one of you has helped make a difference and has made America what it is today. Thank you. The next student here, uh, who's a junior here at Tejanto, is going to be the president of the history club next year. It's about all three of my trips, and that should be in the fourth one next year. Uh, tremendous student. Please welcome Mark Bogosian. Today, I'll have the pleasure of seeing and talking to more veterans than any other day in the year. It is weird to think that I'm in the presence of the men and women that made our country the great place it is today. When I think of a veteran, I think of someone that is greater than any celebrity or athlete. I think of someone that is greater than any celebrity or athlete. Someone who served the country and at times gave their life for this great country. Someone that I respect and appreciate more than they can imagine. In the past three years, I have learned a lot about veterans. Most of this is due to Mr. Nushi and the History Club. Before the History Club, to me, history was just another class with another textbook required by the curriculum. I didn't really, it didn't really affect me too much. However, however, after going to Pearl Harbor in Washington, D.C., I have come to learn that our history was shaped by the brave men and women like you here today. To expand, Pearl Harbor was one of the most incredible things that I've ever seen. 
When I saw the oil still coming out of the water from the Arizona, I tried, not imagine, what it was like the morning of December 7, 1941. And being on the Missouri and seeing the actual location where World War II ended was also very moving. Furthermore, after visiting our nation's capital two years ago, I feel that it is a place that everyone should visit. Not only to see the White House and the Capitol building and the museums, but more specifically to pay tribute to those who served and sacrificed by visiting the Korean War, the Vietnam <coughs> Memorials, in Arlington National Cemetery. Seeing all these names and faces made me realize what your heroes, all of our armed forces truly are. With the Veterans Program, this initiative started here, like the Veterans Expo and Assemblies, I've been fortunate enough to speak to and have many eye-opening conversations with numerous veterans. Through these conversations, I have realized that you can learn so much more from talking to a veteran than reading about it in a standard history book. And I wish more students could have had the same opportunity to learn from the veterans the way I have. Often, when I watch the news and hear about what's going on in Afghanistan today, I understand more now about what they are going through and sacrifice because of what I have learned through our conversations. I hope someday that I'll have the privilege of not only talking to them, but to honor them for their sacrifices for me and everyone else. I have learned so much from veterans and have done, and all this is due to the Mystery Club. I owe that to the Sinuch. But more importantly, I would like to thank each retired veteran and the soldiers fighting today for all they have done for our great country. Without the brave and honorable people like you, my life and so many other lives wouldn't be filled with freedom and security that we often take for granted. Thank you. Okay, if I could call down Veteran John McAuliffe. Good evening to Hanto and fellow veterans. About a week ago, I returned from the World War II dedication in Washington, D.C. You can't imagine how awesome that was. There were some 200,000 people out on the field before the memorial. Most of us couldn't see the podium and what was going on, but they had several screens up so people could see them from afar. I couldn't see anything on the screen. I think the people who stayed home at Birdcote High had a better view of the whole thing than I did, but you could, you could hear very well. Well, I was amazed at the number of buses that pulled up, up to the RFK Stadium in Washington into the parking lot. They came from all over the country. Buses filled with veterans from Legion Post, uh, veterans of foreign wars. Our Battle of the Bulge group uh, had three hotels with 1,100 Battle of the Bulge veterans there. We had the greatest, we were represented the greatest number of veterans of groups. There may have been over 300 groups from all veterans all over the country there. But it was amazing how the buses pulled up and uh, maybe 20 in a row, 25 deep. And after they got out of those buses, they queued up in lines to get on the local shuttle buses, which in turn took them to the site. And those buses kept revolving around until everyone was accounted for. Well, we waited in that line for about an hour and as they got up, little various groups came beside me and I saw in front of me about 12 six-footers. They all had blue jackets in their caps. And you know, I got up to one of them like I always do and picked their brains. I said, what did you guys do? He said, we were merchant marine. I said, was there some stipulation you always had to be over six feet? <laughs> he said, no, we just have our high heels on today. <laughs> but uh, I had a nice talk with him for a whole hour before we got on the bus. It's amazing. Before we even got into the war with Germany, these fellows were in convoys going across to Britain, bringing equipment, all kinds of equipment, destroyers and everything. And many and many of those ships, as you remember, were sunk out in the Atlantic Ocean. Those men gave their sacrifice before most of us even got in the war. They had their own little battle ribbons on their coat, some of which I had never seen before. They were unlike the rest of ours. But I had a nice conversation with them. And one thing he told me, which I didn't know, 
that only recently with the merchant marines counted as veterans. Can you imagine that? Here they are giving their lives before we get into the war and they had not been classified to receive veterans benefits. Well anyway, we had a nice time at the museum, at the uh, memorial, and uh, there was a big block out in front and I copied down the inscription. You know the memorial is between the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. And uh, here in the presence of Washington and Lincoln, one the 18th century father, and the other the 19th century preserver of our nation. We honor those 20th century Americans who together took up the struggle during the Second World War and made the sacrifices to perpetuate the gift of our forefathers entrusted to us, the nation concerned, conceived in liberty and justice. There were many more inscriptions on the Atlantic part and on the Pacific part devoted to the battles in each of those areas. And the veterans uh, gathered all around there to take pictures of them. Well, now we have our monument. There's the Vietnam Monument, the Korean War Memorial, and now we have our World War II Memorial, which we waited 60 years to get. Of the 16 million servicemen and women in World War II, there are only 25% left. All the rest have gone. They never had a chance to see their memorial, but hopefully you fellows who haven't been there will go down there and see it. I'd like to mention that here in Worcester County, we have the Vietnam Memorial of Green Hill. Last October, Frank Carroll and Ken Swift were responsible for placing the Korean War Memorial downtown in Worcester, a beautiful memorial. And uh, the Central Massachusetts Battle of the Bulge Group placed one <clears throat> at College Square at the entrance to the Fit and Fear Holy Cross baseball field. So it's important that we have memorials to remember the sacrifices of our servicemen. For many years, Veterans have been returning to the site of their battle in Europe, Germany, Luxembourg, Belgium, and to the Pacific area. Those places, the islands of Guadalcanal, Saipan, etc. And one group went back to Belgium and they listened to the Belgian writer, Henri de Ver, and he made a very profound statement. There is one thing you dare not forget and must keep internally engraved in your heart. It is the memory of those men who came from far away, from overseas, meaning the American servicemen, who clung to the ground fighting one against ten in the name of liberty. And then he went on to say, when you pass before a military cemetery and you see the little white crosses that mark the graves of the soldiers of Stumont, Roasted in so many little towns in the islands, cry out to them, thank you. Well, that's what we do with our memorials. Many of us have been to those cemeteries, veterans here. I've been over three times, seen about four cemeteries. They're so serene and peaceful. And those are the markers, the white crosses, stand out so beautifully. And I went up to one cemetery up in Holland where 8,000 soldiers lie at rest. These soldiers were active in the liberation of Eastern Holland. They were men from the Air, Air Corps, the airmen who dropped in parachutes and ground forces. We went to the cemetery, there's a nice reflection pool, and there's a statue of the mourning woman, probably the mother of the soldiers, Hardly not a wife, because they were good dear boys of 18. And behind that statue is a 101 foot granite column overlooking the whole cemetery. 
And Monica can inscribe the words to each oak earned his own tribute, which will never die. But the greatest sepulcher is not that in which their mortal bones lie, but a home in the minds of men. In my mind, in your mind, and I'm, I kind of think that when John News was holding his classes, he thought to himself, what can I do for these veterans? And the idea came into his mind, and that's why we are all here tonight. And that's why we all came last March, and many of you veterans shared your albums and memorabilia and experiences with the students. So I thank you for all coming. I especially thank John Booth for what he is doing for us. Veteran, uh, veteran from Westboro, Luis Torres. Uh, good evening, my fellow veterans and guests. My name is Luis Torres. I am retired from the U.S. Army as a first sergeant. And uh, presently, I am the uh, vice commander of the uh, American Legion in uh, Post 163 in Westboro. And with me, of course, I have the commander of the American Legion in uh, Westport. He asked me uh, that uh, I will do the talking uh, for, for, for this veteran dinner function here today. I am proud to have the privilege to address so many of your veterans and your spouses we have served proudly our great country in order that we may enjoy the freedoms that we do here. I have been attending these events honoring the veterans here at Tahanto Regional High School for the past three years. They have been conducted in an outstanding manner by Mr. John Lewis, the history teacher here at Tahanto High School. The students of this history club have shown great interest and are very caring individuals. I have with me an award from the American Legion Post 163 in Westboro and on behalf of all the members of Post 163, I call now John News to present this award that he has extremely deserved for the great job that he has done for all the veterans here at the Hanto High School. And this, uh, the, uh, the award reads, uh, the American Legion has told Parker Post 163, Certificate of Appreciation presented to John P. Newt, giving in grateful appreciation for your contribution in preserving and educating the young in your communities on the sacrifices, history, and memories, and memories the veterans have made to preserve our freedom. Signed, Merrill H. Stratton, Commander, and Luis uh, Torres, Senior Vice Commander. And John, here is a check for a hundred dollars from, from, the, from the members of the American Legion Post 163 to help defray the expenses incurred by the History Club with our sincere appreciation for all. Accompanying with, with my wife and me, are two veterans widows from Westport. Mrs. William Howard, her husband Bill served in the U.S. Air Force for three years. Also, Mrs. Harold Howard, her husband uh, served in the U.S. Army for, the, for five and a half years in World War II. And I would like to ask 
Mrs. Howland and Mrs. Howland to, uh, to please stand up to be recognized by all these great uh, veterans. Also, if there is any wheels in the audience, please stand up to be recognized also. I want to finish by saying I am proud to be an American. I am proud to have served my country for over 20 years, and God bless America. Let me just say what a pleasure it is to be here and listen to my good friend John McCullough, who uh, has a world of knowledge and history uh, that he can share with everyone. It's, it's quite an honor to be with guys like him, <coughs> Mr. Torres, and my friends from Worcester, Mr. Kirby Adams. Uh, you know, the veterans, uh, no one quite can understand what a veteran is uh, feeling today uh, with the current events going on, their uh, care that they're receiving at the VA facilities, which, to be honest with you, uh, is probably subpar in many circumstances. And uh, I think that they deserve much more than they are receiving from our government, from the Veterans Administration. However, let, let me just touch on, on a few things. Uh, John Noosh. Uh, John deserves to be honored here tonight. He has worked to give his students the opportunity to learn about the sacrifices that were made by our veterans. A young men and women should know the tragedies that the nation endured, the individual families and friends of those lost or injured so bad that their lives would never be the same. War is not pretty. Watching your fellow servicemen, and today women, killed in combat, will forever live with each and every service person. How many stories have we heard of the bodies of the dead being rescued, rescued for a, a proper uh, burial? How many stories have we heard of an individual with no regard for his own safety would somehow rescue, rescue a fellow injured soldier? In many ways, war brought out the best of our soldiers. It had to. They learned to cry, they learned to be scared, they were not alone in those feelings. They were united and together. One can only imagine the suffering they saw, the tragedy they saw, but they did what they had to do. Those of us that were not in wars, live our lives, go to our places of worship, our schools, listen to our music, watch our TV programs, go to the movies, ball games, read whatever books we choose to read, we are free to disagree with our government, and we are free to choose our leaders. The rights we have and the lifestyles and careers we choose, we can only say thank you to the veterans of World War II. They did save the world from what, from what only God knows what. The battles that they fought were the bloodiest and most deadly ever recorded. We should never forget their contributions and their sacrifices. Today, we have troops in Iraq, Afghanistan, Bosnia, Korea, Cuba, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, not to mention our numerous bases throughout the world. The torch from the W-2 soldiers, the veterans, have been passed to every generation of new soldiers, to the Korean War, Vietnam, Lebanon, Grenada, Panama, the first Iraq War, Bosnia, Afghanistan, and here we are back in Iraq again. Each conflict carries that torch of freedom. Freedom is what we are and what the United States of America represents. Freedom is what the heroes of the greatest generation gave us. And finally, freedom is what a teacher here at Tejanto, John Noose, passes on the opportunity to all his students to learn the history directly from veterans that were involved and to kind of feel the compassion where these veterans are today, the stories that they can tell. Um, it's hard for kids today in today's society, which is so different from, I'm a lot younger than most of the veterans, but I grew up with TV shows like uh, The Honeymooners, A Week of the Beaver, A Father's Knows Best, shows that had were humorous, family oriented no sex innuendo, no type of mis 
reading language. Today our kids are open up to a society that is this is this what America, our veterans, fought for? It's it's hard to distinguish uh, because our freedom and our right to pursue our freedoms, there's a fine line that is crossed. But one thing that has been lost in this whole transformation is the common decency and respect that was commonplace amongst most of us that grew up in the 50s and 60s. It was not uncommon to see a young kid, 10, 11, 15, hold doors for an elderly lady, or to give up a seat on a bus when buses were used a lot more for transportation than they, than they are today. It was not unusual for gangs of kids who would probably be using some colored language if a lady happened to walk by, that that would stop almost on, on a heartbeat. It, you know, this is what's missing today, and I think what John has done here, and what the veterans from World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, right up to the present, can somehow instill back into the fiber of our young people who are our future, just what it is that we respect. And freedom is probably the only and most important thing that we should respect and realize what was lost in this process. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful with programs like this and the programs that are developing across the country that the young people will realize just what it is to lose a father or a mother or a brother or an uncle or a best friend in a form of combat, never to be seen from again, except the memory. John, this is a flag that's flown over the United States Capitol, and it's a symbol of America and the United States of America and freedom. I would just like to pass on this certificate to John that goes with the flag. This flag was thrown over the United States Capitol at the request of the Honorable James P. McGovern, Member of Congress, and is presented to John P. Hughes in recognition of his work with his students and with veterans of all wars, James McGovern. I expect that he is. Um, before I actually start the film, someone made a suggestion. Oh, I got the one. Yes, sir. Every once, in a, every once in a while, I butt into any program that comes along. Uh, I've seen it happen before. He does. Uh, as a commander of the Get up close to the microphone. Get right up close to the microphone. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> as commander of the Purple Heart in Worcester, also commander for vice commander rather for, for the state. I think there's no better thing than what you've been doing for the veterans and the best thing of all the students in this school. Uh, Franklin figured that you should benefit from that. So slightly worn, like like all the like all the veterans here, is slightly worn in the picture of Franklin. <laughs>